boys and girls. Today we're moving on to a new topic called elapsed time. What does the word elapsed mean? Elapsed mean, means how much time has passed by. So please record this word and its definition into section two in your homework sheet. A little reminder to you, when dealing with elapsed time, often that time is shown with a clock. So just a little reminder that the hour hand is the short hand and the minute hand is the longer hand. And the way I help my students remember that is the word hour actually looks shorter than the word minute. So if you were to actually underline those words, you would see that the word hour has a shorter arrow than the word minute. Just a little trick I like to use sometimes. All right, how do we solve problems using elapsed time? Well, there are a lot of different methods you can use. Addition, subtraction, a timeline, which one's best? Well, it actually all depends on what type of problem you're looking at. I like to use timelines often because they help me see the time that has gone by or the time that has passed. So I'll be showing you that method today. Let's take a look at our first example problem. Daniel began doing his homework at 4.30 p.m. He worked for one hour and 35 minutes. What time did he finish? So I like to actually draw a little timeline to help me see the time that has passed. So to do this, you would just create a line. And we're going to be labeling this line with time. So what do we know? We know that Daniel began doing his homework at 4.30. So I'm going to label the first spot of my line with 4.30. What else do we know from our word problem? Well, we know that he worked for one hour and 35 minutes. Now the easiest way to work with a timeline is to work with the largest chunk of time first, which would be hours. So we know that if we jump an hour and we've started at 4.30, an hour later would be 5.30. So I'm going to label after one hour has gone by. The next thing we need to do is look at the rest of the time that has passed. So now we're dealing with 35 minutes. So what I like to do is once you've dealt with all the hours that you can deal with, I like to then look at the next chunk of time that's a little bit larger than just single minutes itself. So the next chunk of time would be increments of 30 minutes. So if we're dealing with 35 minutes, we can pull out 30 minutes from that time. So if we add on 30 minutes to 5.30, what time would it be then? 5.30 plus 30 minutes gives you 6 o'clock. But we're not quite done yet because the time passed was 1 hour and 35 minutes. So now we need to include that final 5 minutes on. So if we're at 6 o'clock and we jump 5 minutes later, the time would then be... 6.05. And we've now answered our question. If Daniel begins doing his homework at 4.30 and he works for one hour and 35 minutes, he will end at 6.05. And my timeline clearly shows that I'm understanding how this time is passing. All right, now it's time to try some problems on your own. And I'd like you to try to use the timeline method. If you feel like you can solve it using another, another strategy, Please do that as well as the timeline method. All right, here's our first problem. Emily began piano practice at 325. She finished at 5 o'clock. How long did she practice? So a little bit of a different type of problem than our last one. Here we have our beginning time and we have our ending time. You need to find out how much time went by from beginning to end. So use your timeline to see if you can do that. And then our next example, Leo's soccer game ended at 6 o'clock. The game was one hour and 25 minutes long. When did it begin? So this problem again is slightly different from our first example. We have the ending time and how long the game was. And we need to figure out the beginning time. So please try to use your timeline strategy to figure, if, figure out if you can solve these problems. And don't worry if you're having a little trouble. We will, of course, go over it tomorrow in class.
And once again, boys and girls, if you still have any questions or comments or strategy you used, please make sure to put those in box four of your homework sheet. And something else that I'd like you to do as well, in box one of your global connections, as soon as you're done doing everything, I'd like you to think of when you might be able to use this elapsed time strategy in your real life. And please put that example in box one to share out tomorrow in class. All right, boys and girls, you've been flipped with Mrs. Manafo.